The race for one of Texas' U.S. Senate seats is heating up, and both candidates are making Lubbock a big part of their campaigns. Coming up, MCTV's Jay McCauley has a look at one of the rallies that's getting voters pumped up for the election. The Red Raider football team is just two days away from facing one of the biggest opponents on their schedule. MCTV's Paige Saxe has a preview of Tech versus Oklahoma in sports. And Halloween may be the spookiest holiday of the, of the year, but there's another cultural celebration that just might be the most spirited. Find out how the Texas Tech community is taking time to celebrate the Day of the Dead. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Thursday edition of the MCTV Weekly Update. I'm Kristen Souza. And I'm Julia Sewing. In less than a week, Texans will head to the polls to cast their vote in midterm elections. And one of the most heated races in the state, if not the country, will be determined on Tuesday night. That's right, Julia. Current Senator Ted Cruz is facing a tough race against challenger Beto O'Rourke for one of Texas' two Senate seats. With the campaign in its final days, both candidates have made trips to Lubbock to drum up votes for the election. MCTV's Jay McCauley stopped by one of those rallies and has more. Yesterday afternoon, Senator Ted Cruz made his third and final stop in Lubbock, Texas, in hopes that his Hub City constituents will get out and vote. It was a full house at yesterday's rally at 4 Bar K in Lubbock where Senator Ted Cruz focused on key issues like immigration, taxes, and jobs. And with only a couple more days for voters to get out there and vote, Cruz said it was imperative for him to make one final stop in West Texas for this election. West Texas matters a great deal because the common sense conservative values in West Texas, the rest of the state is counting on West Texas to show up and show up in big numbers to ensure that we keep this economic boom growing, that we secure our border, that, that we keep freedom and we defend freedom in our state. Hundreds of West Texans came to rally around Senator Cruz as this midterm election draws to a close. I thought Ted's speech was really good. I think that uh, he has a great sense of humor. He plays really well with the crowd. Uh, it's, it's really a joy to get to see him speak and, uh, and hear about what he has to say about the issues. And I'm really glad that he got to visit Lubbock again so we could all uh, listen to him. Cruz, who is running against U.S. Representative Beto O'Rourke, took many shots at his opponent during yesterday's rally and compared the differences in their records. Mr. Cruz has some morals that I don't think Mr. Beto has, and Texas needs morals and not rhetoric, which is all I heard from Beto. During the rally, supporters listened and cheered as Cruz talked about controversial issues such as President Trump's proposed border wall. Oh, well, I think we should build a wall. I think it's one thing that I do support that Ted Cruz is uh, running on. I think illegal immigration is something that should be stopped, and I think the most comprehensive way to ensure that we can do that is to build a wall. Cruz said that with Election Day coming up, he is feeling very encouraged and that the momentum is with his campaign, which is titled Toughest Texas. And it is such a privilege to be a Texan, to be in a state, to be in a country where anybody can come from nothing and achieve anything. That's who we are, that's what we need to defend. After the Lubbock rally was over, Cruz went on to Amarillo where he will be conducting two more rallies later this week. Don't forget that early voting ends this Friday and general election day is November 6th. Reporting from 4 Bar K for MCTV, I'm Jay McCulley. Back to you guys. Thanks Jay. In other news, a campus department that has a direct effect on the entire campus community is looking for input on how to improve their services. Yesterday, Transportation and Parking Services hosted an interactive town hall event in the library's Coslin Room. Students passing through the library had a chance to stop by and participate in a unique experience, giving them the chance to voice their opinion by answering several survey questions. The questions were printed on poster boards, and students could respond by using colored stickers to indicate their feelings on multiple issues. The event also included a more traditional online survey that students could fill out using tablet computers. We're looking at gathering all of this information to help figure out what our needs of our students and employees are here on campus and what we can do to help address those needs and contribute to the campus. Make it a great place to walk, bike, bus, and drive. TPS also featured a free lunch as an incentive for the first 250 students who stopped by to participate in Wednesday's town hall. If you missed yesterday's event but would like to still offer your thoughts to TPS, you can answer an online survey by visiting the website listed on your screen. Avid readers on the Texas Tech campus had the chance to take home some new reading material during a special one-day event. The Texas Tech University Libraries held a flashbook sale yesterday in the Crosland Room of the Main Library. 
Starting at 10 a.m., members of the tech community had a chance to browse through carts of hardback and paperback books, all on sale for $1. Selections included both fiction and nonfiction books, and there were even some older textbooks and other educational materials available during the sale. During the last hour of the event, the library offered a buy one, get one free promotion on all items. Yesterday's flashbook sale wrapped up at 4 p.m. The Texas Tech campus is a very diverse community with students, faculty, and staff from all around the world. And yesterday, one university department celebrated that diversity during a fun and free event. The annual Language and Culture Day celebration took place yesterday in the Foreign Language Building. The celebration is hosted each year by the Department of Classical and Modern Languages and Literatures. During the day, the department hosted several events, including a culture fair in the basement. From 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., representatives from language clubs and faculty from st and staff from the departments were able to offer information on opportunities to study languages and cultures here at Texas Tech. The event featured tables and booths representing various countries and cultures, and attendees could participate in games, get free candy, and pick up several other giveaways. The celebration also included several opportunities for high school students to come on campus and learn more about the department. The annual Language and Culture Day is held each year on Tech campus. A Texas Tech police officer who was killed in the line of duty was recently immortalized with a permanent monument. This past Saturday, a memorial boulder was unveiled outside the Texas Tech Police Department in honor of Officer Floyd East, Jr. Officer East was killed in October of 2017 while processing the arrest of a student. Since that incident, the university and Lubbock communities have held several memorial services to honor the memory of Officer East. Last month, a ceremony was held in one of the, on the one-year anniversary of Officer East's death and memorial circle. During that event, the Memorial Boulder was announced and the unveiling officially took place this past weekend. The permanent memorial is located in the southeast corner of the TTU PD parking lot. The department's headquarters are located across the Marsha Sharp Freeway off 4th Street. The month of October came to an end with a very chilly and wet Halloween, topping off one of the wettest months of the year so far. That's right, Kristen. With yesterday's rainfall, the total for the month here in Lubbock finished out at just over four and a half inches. So will we continue to see more precipitation as we head into November? Let's take a look at the MCTV forecast. We've seen a lot more sunshine today on the MCTV tower cam. There's still quite a few clouds in the sky, but it's been nicer than yesterday. Temperatures have also been warmer this afternoon, with highs reaching the mid-50s. We could see a high in the 60s before sunset. But later tonight, temperatures will cool off again and lows will be back in the upper 30s. Tomorrow, we'll continue to see warmer conditions and more sunshine. The warming trend should continue into Saturday, with highs expected to reach 70 degrees. If you're planning on attending the football game Saturday night, be sure to grab a jacket. Temperatures will be in the low 60s around kickoff, and it may drop into the low 50s before the end of the game. That cool down will continue into Sunday, with high forecasts to climb above the 60s in the afternoon. The first full week of November will start off with a sunny and warm day. Highs on Monday should climb into the low to mid-70s, and skies should stay clear throughout the day. On Tuesday, we'll continue to see more of the sun, but highs will drop off into the low 60s. We'll see more of the same on Wednesday, but there should be a few more clouds in the sky during the day. Nighttime lows will continue to be cool next week, with temperatures dropping from the mid-40s to the upper 30s as we approach midweek. Looking ahead, even cooler temperatures are in the forecast for the end of next week, with a return of mild conditions for the weekend. Today marks the first day of November, and that means there's only three weeks left until the Thanksgiving holiday. If you're looking for a way to get out of town but don't have a car, there's still a way to get home for the holidays. Tickets for the annual Thanksgiving Break Shuttle are currently on sale. The Break Shuttle is a set of buses that makes trips to Austin, Dallas, El Paso, Houston, and San Antonio during the holiday breaks. This year's shuttle is scheduled to leave campus on Wednesday, November 21st, and return on Sunday, November 25th. All of the shuttles depart from the band lot behind the music building at 9 a.m. and take students to a location where they can be picked up in each of the metro areas. Tickets to and from Austin, El Paso, and San Antonio are $99. The Dallas trip is $93 one way, and the tickets to Houston are $109 each direction. Right now, students can get a $10 discount on all tickets through next Tuesday. If you're interested in booking a Thanksgiving trip, visit BreakShuttle.com and click on Find Your School. With the holidays fast approaching, many people start to think about how they can help out those in need. Luckily, one campus group already has an opportunity for tech students to make a difference. The Student Activities Board is currently hosting the 2018 edition of the Tech Can Share Food Drive. From now through October 30th, members of the tech community can drop off non-perishable food items at the sub. 
The food drive also features a competition for student organizations, with the winner featured during KCBD's You Can Share Food Drive broadcast in December. If you are interested in donating towards your organization's total, you can drop off donations during special weigh-ins held on November 6th, 14th, and 30th. All other donations can be dropped off in room 020 in the sub through Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. For more information on this year's food drive, visit sab.ttu.edu. One of the top 10 football teams in the country is headed to town for a huge matchup with the Red Raiders. MCTV's Paige Saxe has a preview of this weekend's game and more in sports. Paige? Thanks, Julia and Kristen. The Texas Tech football team had an uncharacteristic game against Iowa State on Saturday, losing 31-40. After that, some fans may be a little uneasy about the upcoming game against the Oklahoma Sooners. The Sooners quarterback Kyler Murray led a huge game against Kansas State last week, going 19 and of 24 for 352 yards and three touchdowns, along with 46 yards and one touchdown on five carries. Oklahoma is known for a great offense, but the big question is if the Sooners' defense can stop the Red Raiders' offense. Texas Tech is number seven in total offense and number three in the passing game. An interesting story, story for Saturday is Sooners head coach Lincoln Riley. Riley was a walk-on quarterback at Texas Tech in 2002. He was one of the backups to Cliff Kingsbury and later became the graduate assistant to Mike Leach. It will be an interesting coach off this week for the former Texas Tech players. Head out to the Jones and get ready to black out the Sooners for a much needed night game at 7 p.m. Moving on to the Texas Tech volleyball team, they are coming off a major win against TCU after three straight set wins. The team is on the up and up with a couple players being recognized in the Big 12. Missy Owens has been a huge component to the Lady Raiders this season and leads the Big 12 in assists with four games left. Another important player, Brooke Canis. Canis was named Big 12 Rookie of the Week after leading all Big 12 freshmen in kills per set. Candace recorded a record high match with 13 kills and a 47 hitting percentage against the Horn Frogs. She added a career high six blocks, helping the, te helping the Tech team to win against TCU. The Lady Raiders will be back in action on Saturday at Kansas. First serve is set for 6.30 p.m. After a successful basketball season last year, Coach Beard and his team will be starting up play again today at 6.30 for their charity exhibition game against UTEP. Admission is $10 and this will be a chance to see the talent of the team again before preseason games start on Tuesday, November 6th here in Lubbock against Incarnate Word. Tech leads the series with UTEP minors by a 43-19 margin with the teams first playing each other back in 1931. The women's basketball team will be starting up as well with a new coach, Marlene Starling, Stallings. Coach Stallings has brought in great coaches and has already impacted the tech community, encouraging people to support the Lady Raiders in hopes to get the team back to what they were known for in the past. First game will be on November 9th against the Jacksonville State Gamecocks at the USA. The women's soccer team is now 5-3-1 in conference. They are now on the road to the Big 12 Championship. The five-seeded Lady Raiders grinded out a double overtime to tie with the number four seed TCU on Sunday afternoon in the quarterfinals of the Big 12 Championship. After this game, Tech has earned a trip back to Kansas City for the semifinals where they will face number one seed Baylor on Friday. If you are anything like me after the World Series ended, you are already missing baseball season. But you don't have to worry. The Texas Tech baseball team has scheduled their annual Red vs. Black inter squad scrimmage at Danlaw Field. Game 1 was today at 3.30, and here's a look at the rest of the game scheduled. Game 2 will be tomorrow at 3.30, Game 3 on Sunday at 2, and Games 4 and 5 next Tuesday and Wednesday at 3.30. Before the season opener, this will be your chance to check out the new talent of the Red Raiders. That's all for sports. Back to you, Julia and Kristen. Thanks, Paige. Last night, many members of the tech community enjoyed some freaky fun while celebrating Halloween. But with the night of terror out of the way, members of the tech Hispanic population are observing a much more somber occasion. That's true, Julia. From now through tomorrow, the Day of the Dead is being celebrated by millions of people in Mexico and the United States, including right here in Lubbock. The Day of the Dead is a Mexican holiday that is traditionally celebrated from October 31st through November 2nd. The holiday is a chance for family and friends to pray for and remember loved ones who have died and are making their way through, through the afterlife. To honor that journey, the TTU Library has set up a special ofrenda just inside the Croslin Room on the east side of the building. The ofrenda gives students, faculty, and staff a place to display photos of loved ones who they would like to celebrate and remember during the holiday. Participants are also encouraged to place other personal items on the ofrenda, such as clothing or even a favorite toy for a child. 
If you would like to drop off a picture or personal item, just stop by the Crosland Room anytime between now and Monday. If you'd like, to, if you'd like the item to be returned, please be sure to provide contact information on the back of each item. And east of the library at the Art Building, there's another exhibit on display to honor those who have passed away. In memory of is a shadow box expedition that can currently be found in the School of Art Studio Gallery. The exhibit contains creations by members of the Texas Tech Love and Lubbock communities, giving them a chance to remember and honor a loved one during the Day of the Dead. Each shadow box features pictures, memorabilia, artwork, and other items specific to the person being remembered. All of the in memory of pieces will be on display from now through Sunday, and the exhibit will also be part of the annual Day of the Dead procession. The procession is a joint event held by Texas Tech and the City of Lubbock. During the procession, several venues will feature artwork, performances, and activities for the general public to celebrate this holiday. This year's procession takes place tomorrow starting at 5.30 p.m. in the International Culture Center. The next stop will be at the School of Art at 6.30, followed by the festivities at the Louise Hopkins Underwood Center for the Arts at 7.30. In conjunction with the procession, there will also be a special exhibit on display at the Buddy Holly Center, along with a performance by a local mariachi band. All of tomorrow's events are free and open to the public. So, Julia, are you planning to enjoy any of the Day of the Dead activities? I'm going to go by the Buddy Holly Center and see the band. That's all for today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us, and be sure to check ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you next week.